what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, because he has that profile and he's going to go for it, let me go for it as well. <laughs> and we saw, in, in Piers Morgan's words, the most combative debate in TV history. It was an, an amazing debate. I watched Absolutely. it about three, four times. Yeah. And I even heard Piers read out, I believe, a letter you sent into the show last week as well. That's right. So you're, so you're well known. But let's move on from then, talk about something that's really important. I was calling for you a couple of weeks ago, and I asked um, Ali Darwa to send a message, and I hope he did, that Little Street Mike wants to talk to you. And the reason why, when the riot started in Southport, yeah. I was there. I was in the middle of it, 24 hours after that young lady, the three young girls were murdered, yeah. I was there. When it went up, I was there. Yeah. But the question I want to ask you, Mohammed, as you know, a fake message, fake information went out that the perpetrator was a Muslim. There was then foolishness being spoken about, and then people wanted to start burning mosques. From your point of view, you know, what did you think, feel, and believe when people were calling on your religious? Yeah. locations to be burnt and destroyed. Well, I'll tell you what, I think you summarised it in a very good way. I think the, the, the timeline of events, the way you've just summarised it, is exactly what happened. You had false information come out, and then subsequently you had misdirection of anger to a community which had not even been implicated. Because this, this idea that he was an immigrant, this idea that he was a Muslim, all of these things were actually fake, you know. So, I think it just is a contrivance of narrative. We've seen that the far right have tried to contrive this narrative and superimpose it by any means necessary onto the Muslim population. But I think it also shows one of the greatest failures of the far right in modern times. Because they tried to do it on two different occasions. On the first occasion in Southport, they tried to do it and they failed. Because it turned out the man was a Christian from Rwanda and he wasn't an immigrant. On the second occasion in Leicester Square, we saw that the person who actually came in to intervene was a Muslim. So to answer your question, I think to answer your question, it's clear for everyone to see that the far right have failed here tremendously. And I think the reason why that's happened is because there's an outside interference. Yeah, and we can see people like Tommy Robinson. Yeah, we can see you can you can academics like David Miller and others have looked at his streams of funding. He's an open Zionist, he's openly a Zionist. It's no, I think, coincidence that this is happening after the 7th of October, it's happening at the time after all these protests that we've seen that are pro-Palestine. I think it's a convenient distraction that has been put in place to try and vilify the Muslim community in Britain. But when you people keep saying that the riots were caused by far-right people, in my opinion, the riots was a result of angry community coming out because they felt they had been failed by the system, and, and and as a direct result of that, three girls got murdered, but they were reacting in anger. There's nothing to do with left and right. The community was angry. Is my interpretation wrong? No, I think some of it is true, but here's the truth of the matter also. I think there's a lot of safe self-anger, self-hatred. Look at the people that are coming out on the streets. Some of like the stuff that we see in some of these cities in Britain, people are just smashing random cars, smashing yeah. random buildings, etc. I personally believe, and not to be Freud here, psychoanalyze the situation, that they're most angry with themselves. It's not people that are coming out of JP Morgan with uh, you know, six-figure salaries that are coming out on the streets protesting. Because these guys have, in their understanding, made it in life. What we're seeing is people who are on the socioeconomic echelons, the lower socioeconomic echelons of society, who have failed in every aspect and facet of life, familiarly, spiritually, monetarily and otherwise, that now need a convenient scapegoat to try and explain their failure to society. And what we're seeing is that these people can't, cannot, cannot take responsibility for their own failure, so they're taking it out on these immigrants, on these blacks, on these Muslims, etc. We've seen black people getting attacked in the streets. It's not just about a Muslim thing, by the way. So I think, at the end of the day, someone looking from the outside might think that this is a majority opinion in Britain. This does not constitute the majority opinion in Britain. Go and look, for example, at polls and, and the far-right rhetoric is not what the majority of people in Britain believe. Most people in Britain are accepting of people from different uh, backgrounds of religions and races. Like They're not on that kind of stuff that these guys are on. 
in many ways, these guys have provided for us a case study. Because we've always, always heard on the news, oh, it's black people that are, you know, etc. It's Muslims or whatever. Now we're seeing white working class people. It shows you one thing, that the fundamental analysis of why criminality happens is not actually to do with race or religion. It's to do with socioeconomic status. People who have less money have, le have, more to, have less to lose. So they'll do stuff like that. If you want one predictor that would indicate to somebody why someone is more veered towards criminality or pathology or anything else, the predictor is socioeconomics. That's why whether it's a working class person that's from a black background in inner city London, or that's a working class background from a white background, it's the, the outcomes are similar. It's nothing to do with race or religion. So in many ways, the irony of the situation is these guys are coming out to try and show that it's the immigrants' fault, and by so doing, they've shown us that it's their fault. It's their problem. What do you have to say in regards to the sentence which was handed down to the grandmother last week who was calling on, who made a post on Facebook calling for mosques to be damaged? I don't know the details of that. Right, right. Yeah, I can't comment on that. Um, so, so Mohammed, why is it we don't see you coming down here? I've more, been traveling, more, I've been traveling. More often? I don't know, I don't know. But everyone misses you. Uh, that's be right. Because earlier on, we, 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 we had um, the nation of Islam who were here, and we noticed that you didn't come over to have a, have a discussion, but what, what the brother Leo Mohammed said was during his absence over the last year, Weeds had grown up, and he's come here today to chop the weeds, and you've turned up. <laughs> well, look, the nation of Islam doesn't interest me. We're not in the 1960s anymore. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, after Malcolm X, I think that the nation of Islam, especially what they've done to him, frankly, people are not interested in the nation of Islam. So they can stand there and do their thing, but no one's interested. I'm not excited to talk to them. Um, so final point, I know lots of people want to engage with you. Yeah. You know, as you look around, you're seeing men, women, lots of young people down here today. Yeah. Can you see Speaker's Corner getting better and better and better, and more people are engaging as a direct result of social media, or is something else happening by so many people being out here today? Are they attracted by you, Mohammed? I think they are. I'm, the, I'm, joking, I'm joking. Look, honestly, this place, I'll be honest, if you look and do a count of how many people have watched what's happened in this park from around the world in different languages, we're talking about hundreds of millions, actually close to billions now. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, like, if you, like, for example, a lot of the channels that are recorded now, SC Dawa Middle East, I think there's like 400 million channel views for that. You know, like um, SC Dawa. I don't know, a couple hundred millions. Do you know what I'm trying to say? If you add it all up, the Malaysian language, the Russian language, this, that, and the other, it adds up to about a billion channel views. So what we've got here is something special, you know? What we've got here is something special. That's the reason why you keep coming. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why I keep coming. Because it is a place where you just let ideas run and you'll see what the survival of the fittest ideas are going to be like. And that's why you'll see that the Sunni Muslims are always dominating this place. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's about the strength of ideas rather than how much money someone has for propaganda, as you can see. But uh, it's good to see that everyone's holding their ground here from the brothers. And of course, I'm always here. You know, I live not far away from the place, so. I know. You know, okay. So as, you know too much about me, brother. <laughs> so as normal, Mohammed, thank you very much. We engage all the time. Yeah. But I managed to engage with Ali last week, Shamsi, the Sheikh. And I called them then to send you down here yeah. because everyone was missing you. Well, you got it now, brother. Big up, big up, big up. Big up. Nice big one. Up. Thanks a lot. Is this yeah. yours? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Right, nice. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Thank you, bro. So let's have a go. Uh, no, it's not like this. Hello, How are you, brother? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. I think everyone's off the you. questions I want to ask you. Of right? course, of course. Um, cool. Um, okay, you, to... put, you put down your bag. Oh, no, no, I mean, because um, I have actually had been watching you on YouTube for quite some time. Um, and, you know, I, I was actually interested in Islam for quite some time. Right. Come to Speaker's Corner and then, you know,